Welcome to Daily Devos. My name is Raymond Gregory. We uh, upload and stream brand new Devos every weekday at 7 a.m., so be sure to subscribe and uh, join us on this journey through the Bible. Right now we're going through 1 Corinthians, and today we'll be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now, uh, I read a great quote by a great philosopher. It said, Those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And of course, that great philosopher was Dory the Fish from Finding Nemo. Actually, no, it wasn't. But you remember Dory? She had short-term memory memory loss, and so she was doomed to repeat the same conversations over and over and over again. Um, an actual philosopher, Karl Marx, puts it this way, history repeats itself. The first time, tragedy. The second time, farce. But I'd actually kind of want to tweak it a little bit because I find that It's a little more like this. History repeats itself. The first time, it's comedy. The second time, it's tragedy. And I know this because I have kids. And I've repeated a lot of mistakes many, many times with both my kids. And you think you would learn from your mistakes, but you haven't. And one of my mistakes was introducing them to Finding Nemo. Now, uh, I had a little bit of a warning back when my little sister-in-law used to come to visit us. She would always want to watch Finding Nemo. She called it Momo. And she should get all excited. I want to watch Momo. And then my daughter, same thing. I want to watch Momo. They always call it Momo. And so we'd watch Finding Nemo over and over and over again. But we thought it was cute. Oh, it's just like Katie. But now my son wants to watch Finding Nemo over and over and over again. It's no longer comedy. It is now tragedy. I cannot take Finding Nemo anymore. Well... In 1 Corinthians 10 here, Paul has a warning for us to not repeat the sins of the past, not repeat our past mistakes by learning that they've already been made by other people and they've been written down to warn us. And so I've titled this Devo, P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. So if you know the reference, it's Dory. The only thing that she was able to remember in Finding Nemo was the address P. Sherman 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. And so she said it over and over and over again. She knew that her destination was P. Sherman 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney. So keep that in your back pocket because it's going to come in handy later. So let's start reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll be in the New Living Translation. It says this, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, about your ancestors in the wilderness long ago. All of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them, and all of them walked through the sea on dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. All of them ate the same spiritual food, and all of them drank the same spiritual water, for they drank from the spiritual rock that traveled with them, and that rock was Jesus. Yet God was not pleased with most of them, and their bodies were scattered scattered to the wilderness. So, I have two points for you here today in how to avoid repeating past mistakes. And the first point is this. We need to remember that Sunday isn't to compensate for the week. It's to complement your week. Or more specifically, going to church isn't to compensate for your week. It's to complement your week. Uh, You know, my grandmother used to go to church every week and she was always there. She would serve and... If she missed a Sunday, the next Sunday, she would go to two services. So she'd sit through the same service twice because she thought, oh, I need to compensate. I, I didn't go last week, so I need to go twice this week. And so Paul's talking about some of the things like, uh, you know, walking through the sea and dry land and how he's likening that to baptism. We go through baptism now, not to save us, but to signal that we are saved. And uh, and he talks about them drinking of the same spiritual water as now we have communion. And we would know that communion doesn't wash our sins away. It reminds us that our sins are washed away. And so he's warning them against becoming too comfortable in the fact that their religiosity has done something for them, has compensated for the fact that they're still living wicked lives. And so we can't treat church as a compensation, but rather a compliment. 
These things are there to remind us of God's word, to remind us of how to live. You know, Psalm 119 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. It should be to change your heart, to change the way you're thinking, not to make up for something that you've done and to allow you to continue living uh, a life that is contrary to what Christ wants you to live. Verse six says this, these things have happened as a warning to us so that we would not crave evil things as they did or worship idols as some of them did. As the scriptures say, the people celebrated with feasting and drinking and they indulged in pagan revelry. And we must not engage in sexual immorality as some of them did, causing 23,000 of them to die in one day. Nor should we put Christ to the test as some of them did uh, from and died from snake bites. And don't grumble as some of them did and they were destroyed by the angel of death. These things happened as an example for us. These things were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. And so the second point I want to draw from this as to how to not make past mistakes over and over and over again, and to learn from them, is to not forget your destination. Don't forget your destination. So the people, the Jewish people, the Hebrews, were brought out of Egypt. They crossed on dry land. They were delivered, but they were heading somewhere. They were heading for the promised land. But because they were delivered, now they started resting in their deliverance and forgetting their destination. And, you know, the best way to leave the past behind you is to continue moving into the future. And the best way to avoid repeating the mistakes is remembering the ones you've already made or remembering ones that have already been made and given to you as a warning. And so we can read back on history. We can read back in the Bible on all these flawed people who saw great power and were delivered from great things, but fell short before reaching their destination. Their destination was the promised land, and so many of them were not able to make it there because they rested in their victory instead of moving forward. And so Hebrews 13, 14 says this, for this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. And so to keep from avoiding or so to avoid making the same mistakes over and over is to read the warnings here in scripture and knowing that others have made those mistakes and so you don't have to make them because you can learn from them and to always look forward to your destination so again to recap sunday isn't to compensate for your week going to church isn't to compensate for your week but it is to complement your week baptism doesn't save you it's a signal that you're saved communion doesn't wash your sins away it reminds you that your sins were already washed away. We should be hiding God's word in our heart. We should be striving to live holy lives in light of those things. And then number two, we need to not forget our destination. This world is not our home. There is the promised land. We can't rest in the fact that we've been delivered. We need to become more and more like Christ by diving into his word, praying, spending time with him daily. And to know and to keep in the forefront of our mind, P. Sherman, 42, Wallaby Way, Sydney, or Jesus Christ. Just keep repeating that, and we will reach our destination. And we won't repeat our past mistakes. It won't be tragedy, and it won't be comedy. It'll all be gravy. I don't know. I couldn't think of anything there. So I love you guys. That is what I have for you today. And uh, be sure to like this if this ministered to you. And then maybe shoot me in the comments some techniques that you use to keep from repeating your past mistakes and things that you use and maybe some scriptures that comfort you in keeping you focused on your destination. So I love you guys. You can send me prayer requests to my email, which is below there. And again, if you want to join this journey through the Bible, you can subscribe to this channel and uh, you'll get weekly or sorry, daily devos every weekday at 7am. So I will see you guys in the next video. Music